Thank you, Steve. And um, thank you to the Bright Club organizers as well for inviting me back for a second time. They clearly didn't see me last time. Um, just before I get started, um, I have to say it is my birthday today, so please be gentle. <laughs> right, so I'm Gillian. I'm a, I'm a geneticist. And last time I was here, I was talking about the work I did uh, in my lab, which was using kind of gene therapy to try and cure the blind. But since, surprise, surprise, we haven't cured it yet, um, I thought I would talk about something a little bit different, something a little bit weird and interesting. Um, so I have a couple of examples for you guys about something strange, but something, something we're all familiar with. Sex. No, don't worry, it's, 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 not, it's not all that kinky. Um, some of you guys um, have probably heard of voles, and for those who haven't, they're small little mouse-like, cute little creatures that, um, that live in fields. But when you look under the surface, voles are really fucking weird. <laughs> there are 155 species of them, but most of them all appear to look the same. And despite this, they can have anywhere from 17 to 64 pairs of chromosomes that make up their genome, compared to our, our 23. <laughs> Sorry. And um, yeah, they're, they're, no one really knows why. They've, they've tried asking the votes, they haven't really given up much information and the, um, the ethics committees have kind of shot down our kind of waterboarding experiments that we had <laughs> planned, but there's one particularly strange case that, um, that I thought I'd talk about. There are these two species of voles called prairie voles and meadow voles, and they're, they're really, they're quite similar. In fact, I don't really know the difference between a prairie and a meadow, <laughs> but there's one key difference. Prairie moles, prairie voles, I knew I was going to do that. Prairie voles are monogamous. Um, the, the males make great parents. They're loving, doting fathers. They're, they're kind. They're caring. Whereas meadow voles, you, you, know, you kind of find them in a gad jersey at coppers at four in the morning. <laughs> um, and it's, there's, there's a really interesting reason what that separates them. It mostly comes down to a single gene and a single hormone called vasopressin. Vasopressin, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of oxytocin. It's kind of widely touted as the love hormone. Vasopressin in this instance is kind of like the, the anti-philanderer hormone. You know, it keeps, it, keeps, it keeps the voles monogamous. And the prairie voles, they have, um, they have this expanded repetitive region of DNA that causes, uh, that causes massive overexpression for the receptor that senses vasopressin. So they're really sensitive to it. And the, the meadow voles just don't have that, and so um, they, don't, they don't really listen. But it's really cool because you can, you can overexpress that vasopressin receptor in meadow voles, and suddenly a, a switch flips, and they become loving, monogamous little rat things. <laughs> and equally, you can, you, can, you can block that receptor in prairie voles, and they full on go Tiger Woods. <laughs> It's really, it's, 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 uh, it's quite funny because, you know, reading, researching for all this, you, I, I read a lot of kind of press releases and stuff, and some of it gets really pop science-y, but the big difference you always find between science media and sort of the media at large is that at no point has anyone tried to slut shame meadow voles. <laughs> Shameless little cretins that they are. No fear, sinner God, I tell you. None at all. Anyway, voles, voles are weird, but there's, when you move from mammals to birds, it gets even weirder. And one particular bird in, in particular. <laughs> it's, called the, um, it's called the white-throated sparrow. And it doesn't have two sexes. It has four. You see, you have males and females, but you have additional morphs, they're called, based on whether they have a, a white or a tan tuft of feathers on their head. And um, a white male will only seek to mate with a tan female. Sorry, that sounds really bad. <laughs> um, uh, a tan male will only seek to mate with a, a white female and so on and so forth. So you wind up with, with four distinct sexes, white males, white females, tan males, and tan females. Um, as an aside, in case this wasn't obvious, it was really hard not to indulge in a, in a, in a lot of race jokes. <laughs> Particularly because some of the way, the way some of the papers are written, there was, um, there was one that was talking about nest intrusions by by males into other males' territories, and, and, and the line read, I think it was, 79% um, of intruders were white. Kind of <laughs> sounds a little bit like a reverse Daily Mail article. <laughs> so 
So here's why. So with our um, when our when we're reproducing, our pairs of chromosomes line up and exchange genetic material. And the reason for this is if you imagine each chromosome as a as a deck of cards, and you've got one normal one, and one where you know you've got way too many twos and you've no kings and you've got the rules for bridge, which you kind of use as a seven of clubs, but doesn't really do the same. So you shuffle those together, and um, so that and kind of just split them in half, so that on average. You know, the, um, the genes you're passing on are kind of like the average, as opposed to having a 50% chance of having a, a shitty two-filled deck. Um, and that's when, um, with our, say, with our XY sex chromosomes, um, they came about because of uh, what, what they call a chromosomal inversion. If you imagine a, a scissors cut out a big chunk of the chromosome in the middle, inverted it, and stuck it back in. Um, and because of that, the... the now disjointed pair of chromosomes can't line up, they can't exchange genetic material. So any mutations that come up can't get shuffled out. They keep, they keep building up, and so in the case of the XY chromosomes, the Y chromosome is degenerated significantly. And that's exactly what's ha oh, hi. <laughs> that's exactly what's happened with these birds, with a second set of chromosomes. You've got an inversion, um, a load of mutations building up in the now white chromosome, that's produced uh, a range of behavioral changes as well as the, the obvious white tufted feathers. So the whites are monogamous and, um, no, they're not, sorry. The whites are promiscuous, they're really aggressive, they're poor at parenting, but they make great singers. Whereas the tan, <laughs> they also can't jump. <laughs> Whereas the tan birds, they're monogamous, they're, 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 very good pa they're very good parents, but they sing a bit like Jedward after a bottle of tequila. Um, in fact, it, the, the, the white birds are so promiscuous, you might actually think about setting them up with the meadow voles. I think they'd be into that. <laughs> and it's, but it's these mutations, importantly, have caused this behavioral change that you almost never get white or tan birds that, that mate with their own kind. So you really do effectively have four different sexes. And in those rare cases where white birds do mate with, because they're super promiscuous, they're really kind of aggressive about it. Um, sometimes you, you, you get a hatchling that has two copies of this degraded white chromosome that I swear to God, in the literature they call super white. <laughs> Which, incidentally, was my rapper name in college. <laughs> and like my rap career, they're not viable for very long. <laughs> so, yeah, there you have it. You have um, two little weird sex stories about the animal kingdom. There were a few more I, w I was looking at. There's this amoeba with seven sexes called tetrahymen, but um, there's, <laughs> honestly, with a single-celled organism, there's only so many dirty jokes you can make. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really bad at holding this here. Oh, keep it here. I don't know why I'm doing this, this is the end of my talk. <laughs> but yeah, so um, thank you for listening. I hope, um, I hope, as always, that you've learned something, even if it's not strictly speaking correct. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, and um, enjoy your night. <laughs> Gillian Hannon! <laughs>